So I was in Brazil doing a master's in animal biology and I worked with uh, fish communities in the Pantanal wetlands um, and that involved you know being in the water doing lots of underwater footage collecting things getting to spend time with freshwater stingrays anacondas um, waking up in the morning and finding you know jaguar prints around the camp Let's go back to that one. This is, uh, I'm just going off topic now, but um, this is one of the first ever Iwagumis. You know, it's a step away from aquascaping, if you like, yeah. but it lets you see how fish live in, 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 natural, in the wild. In their natural habitats. And you can incorporate that into a, an aquascape. This is the story about how Amarno discovered CO2 injection. Hi everyone, George here, and I'm with my good friend and colleague, Ty Streetman. Is it Streetman or Streitman? Streetman. Streetman. Yeah. And we're in his lovely bedroom. And he's got a beautiful tank that I want to kind of show you guys and talk about in some more depth. Ty is no stranger to the channel. Do check out. I'm going to dedicate a new playlist to just to Ty, so you can check out all the previous videos that I've done together with, with Ty. We will be working a lot more in the future together, so that's some exciting news to announce uh, at some point in the near future. But it's um, really, really big news, and yeah, I'll just leave it there. Um, so, Ty, this is your ADA60P system. Yeah. How long has it been running? Um, so it's been running a couple of months, but in this particular scape, only about two weeks, really. Okay. Um, but it looks really mature. Are they the sort of mature plants that you've reused? Yes. Basically, I originally when I planted it, I didn't have any hardscape in it, and oh, okay. I was quite inspired by some of you know. If you look at Takashi Amano's earlier works in his small tanks, he actually doesn't use much hardscape. There's lots of stem plants. There's lots of quite chaotic plantings going on. Yeah, and I did that, and it looked alright. Um, this is like '90s stuff, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Which like I like his Nature Aquarium uh, World Book. In fact, I'm going to get it right now. Yeah, and then yeah, so. Yeah, this, you've got this kind of chaotic mixture of plants going on, which yeah. is quite similar to some of the... Well, there you go, the first page we open. Yeah. It is just, it's almost cha chaotic duck style, isn't it? There's one jungle style. One particular tank that he did with just, um, like, Glosso and Hemianthus. Oh, look at, go back to that one. This is, uh, I'm just going off topic now, but um, this is one of the first ever Iwagumis. Yeah. Which is now about 40, it was set up about, there you go, 1985. <laughs> So what's that, 15 plus 21, 36 years ago? When the rest of us were playing with sunken castles and pink gravel. Yeah, and yeah. And Amano was doing stuff like 36 that. 36 years ago, the first Iwagumi. How cool is that? Ah, go back to that one. This is the story about how Amano discovered CO2 injection. You should tell, it, tell us about it. Well, it's um, basically he goes to a bar and he sees the carbonated water and he puts two and two together and he realises that it's got this carbon dioxide and if he puts yeah. it in his aquariums he can make the plants grow better through <laughs> photosynthesis. So that's it in a nutshell. And, and here we are now with an industry dedicated to producing CO2, CO2 for tanks yeah, yeah. and yeah, so that's the story. That's and all the, the rest. And the back stories. I love so for those that don't know, it's a bit of history, yeah. this is one of his first published books from the, from the 90s and um, this is pretty much what changed the game for, for most you know, modern aquascaping. Yeah. But his just use of textures and you know like you would in a garden you've got bold, bold large leaf plants and they yeah. are highlighted by you know smaller narrow leaved and softer textures yeah and yet none of it is overpowering it's all in place yeah um, some of them that look really natural yeah like this one I think is just fantastic it is isn't it and fundamentally, yeah. it's perfect for fish. It's 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 you know it's friendly for fish welfare. Yeah. And and. Uh, oh, look at this. That Bobitis. Yeah. Stunning. Again, yeah, he was just so ahead of the curve. Well, he made the curve, didn't he? Really. Yeah, he, he was the curve. He was the curve. He was the curve. And and for me, it's fish are happy in it, and I can't think yeah. it's the most you know important thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is very similar to your kind of. But, um, anyway, back to your tank. Well, basically what happened was I went to see uh, Dave at Aquarium Gardens. Yeah. And uh, I showed him some photos of my layout. I said, you know, is there anything different you would do? And he said, well, I'd put some hardscape in it. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the backbone of, of your aquascape. 
yeah. and so Dave sat with me and, and we had a play. And when was this? How long ago? This was yeah two weeks ago. Or so okay, um, when I went over there, and um, he in his sort of sandpit laid out some ideas with some bits of uh, manzanita wood, and um, made some suggestions. I thought, okay, well that's what I did. So I I kind of ripped everything out and I yeah. put it together a little bit as you see now, and so everything is still finding its feet and and adjusting and, and, and getting back into the swing of just growing without being disturbed. But it's starting to fill out. Um, yeah, it's starting to look great, mate. I really like it. I think, and I think the hardscape does bring quite a lot more to it. Suddenly there's levels of interest at all, you know, all heights. Um, Should we talk some, of, let's talk about some of the equipment. You've got the Twin Star yeah. LED on the top there. So this is the, the Twix, Twin Star 600 uh, E. E, yep. So it's the lower power version, but it's obviously yep. doing a great job in here. This again came from, uh, mm -hmm. Aquarium Gardens, uh, as did the, the ADA yeah, 60P. The actual tank itself is the 60P. Yep. Um, the, interestingly, the cover glasses for the 60Ps are quite difficult to get hold of at the moment. Okay. And I managed to get mine from Horizon Aquatics. Oh yeah, they're cool. Well, and yeah, they're I was, up in the northeast. Yeah, and I was really impressed with them because I actually ordered the wrong size um, uh, garden hooks. Oh. And they called me up and they were like, look, you've ordered this, but you've got the wrong hooks. Yeah. And there's not a lot of businesses that would think to do that. And they no, did that, so that was no, really... Very conscientious. Very conscious. And, and yeah, that's good. And I was really pleased. Yeah, shout out to those guys. So yeah. underneath, you can't see it too well, but there's um, there's a Crystal Profi external oh, in yeah. there, Got it, yeah. JBL. Uh, there's classic fire extinguisher um, uh, CO2 system. Yeah. And the... What diffuser have you got? Diffuser is just in line. Oh, you've got just an inline uh, diffuser, okay. Just a simple little inline one. Yeah. And then the heater is a high door external heater. Okay. That I keep at about 22 degrees. Oh, yeah, on the cooler side then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan um, of the coolest. I'm dosing Furts, I'm dosing daily some uh, JBL. Uh, Ferropole. Ferropole, exactly. And then I've got. It's just like a trace element mix, isn't it? I think with that. Oh, yeah. My friend Ian Sutherland gave me this uh, nature aquarium, gives the, the green oh, brightest that's set an too. old school bottle. Yeah, Check which that. Was, this is from like. <laughs> this is like 20 years old, no, it's like 15 years old, that logo now. Well, yeah. give, given how old Ian is, it's probably, you know. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. But he gave that to me, it was so generous. And then I've been dosing this Flourish Excel, mm -hmm. which um, Adrian Myers, who's one of the other Aquascape guys, had suggested because I've got that filamentous, sort of fairly brittle thread algae. Yeah, and it's like had, a Spirogyra, that's what yeah, I've got in my uh, Star He had suggested double dosing for a week, and maybe that would do it. And how did you uh, find that? What happened after um, you diced that much? It didn't, it wasn't, the fish weren't very happy. So yeah. <laughs> I, I reduced the double dose. It depends on the tanks and the volume of water. I'm not a fan of using any chemicals if I can help it. I'd rather kill That's the algae well. with you know, good maintenance and good plant growth. Well, it doesn't bother me really day to day. You so don't I've really kind have of much anyway, back. is it? Yeah, it's, kind of all gone it's, it's in the moss. and. Then, if that's where it wants to be without, you know, it's not spoiling the aesthetic. Spoiling anything, though. I'll leave it there. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of Amanos sort of just foraging away. There's some quite nice um, sort of chocolate cherry shrimp uh, near Oh, yeah, lovely. Let's get a close up of those bad boys. Yeah, some clear cherry shrimp over here. So these are tiger shrimp? Well, yeah, they're called Neo Corridinia tiger. I think they're just sort of like a wild form of the cherry, basically. Okay. Um, and I, I like them because they, they breed really easily. They always busy and um, they're sort of quite natural looking yeah are you not a big fan of like the super red and really no, high, high color stuff I mean, no? in this tank you've seen i've got like the chocolate cherries i've got these sort of wild colored ones i've got some amanos i think they can be amazing but really colorful shrimp in a tank set up specifically for, for them yeah. yeah but this this is it's more of a wild style tank this yeah. one isn't it and the fish so the small ones are sedge tetras, Hyphesobrycon ilakis, um, and then the large ones are the black wing hatchet, which is Gustera sedge tetras, pelicus something. Yeah, so S E D G E. Sedge is in the plant, um, oh, okay. and they come from from the Paraguay River basin, from the Pantanal in Brazil. I've actually collected them and, and swum yeah. with them in in Brazil. Oh wow! Um, and they're quite. You don't see many people using them, often confused with kitty tetras. Nearly always in the shop, they're labelled as kitty tetras. Oh, okay. Um, they're very similar. They are similar. They're, they're a bit more slender, more of a silver bluish colour to them. They don't get quite as large and chunky as, as kitty tetras, uh, which is the Hyphospirecon heliacus. And then the black wing, black wing hatchets are I think, southern, southern Amazon, Amazon basin. Um, but they're rescues, basically. I saw them, they were in a 
large system with all sorts of other fish and there are yeah. only two of them and okay. I thought well I'll I'll put them in here and yeah normally I would have many more hatchets but they seem quite happy um, and they hang out near the surface and that brings up the sedge tetras yeah. um, so in the sedge tetras the males have got these elongated fins you can see and they'll they'll flare them at each other and do little sort of spiral dances and small shimmies displays yeah. Yeah. got a lovely electric blue around the eye and uh, as the females mature they go a sort of coppery greeny color right. whereas the males stay a more silvery blue um, and they're just really peaceful delicate little fish do need to be kept in you know at least a small shoal yeah. um, although interestingly in the wild i only ever saw or collected like three or four of them at a time and they lived underneath um beds of uh, floating water hyacinth the iconia crassipis yeah along the banks of, of lagoons and, and rivers in the pantanal and we'd, we'd you'd thrust nets underneath and you'd come out with all sorts of tetras and, and small cichlids and things and a few of these guys would be in amongst them yeah um, I think it's a lovely combination. It's something I wouldn't even think about putting together. But do these coexist? Well, they, um, there are hatchet fish in, in the same habitat. Uh, Thoracarx, uh, Thoracarx stellatus, which are the, the giant silver hatchets, okay. are found in the same habitat. They wouldn't really hang out together. No. But they're both, both these species are quite delicate and shy in some ways. They're a bit nervous, so keeping them together Neither of them are more boisterous than the other. Okay. Um, hatchets provide some, uh, you know, act like dither fish up at the surface. Okay. Which tends to encourage the smaller tetras to sort of come up and explore the tank. Right. And the presence of the smaller tetras makes the hatchets feel a bit more relaxed and less likely to jump. There is a cover glass on here because if you have hatchets, you need a cover glass. Yeah. Because um, you recommended hatchets from my discus tank, didn't you? Yeah, I, I think. Um, uh, group of the little marbled hatchets or a group of the giant silver hatchets yeah. but decent numbers. I'll wait until I upgrade the tank because yeah. I'm going to get a 600 high line so I'll wait for that. I think. I think a swarm of marbled hatchets would be pretty yeah, amazing. 20 or 30 of them maybe. Yeah as, ma as many as you can get in there. They're yeah. just the more the merrier. Um, but yeah it's... I, think I, might get, I really like Remino Tetris and Discus tank as well. They are lovely. Yeah. Just the constant movement and you know when they get to a good size as well, they're quite impressive fish. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about some of the plants then. You've got sure. a, real, um, <laughs> a real mixture. I love the way they're kind of naturally blended in together. Yeah. Let's start off here. We've got Amianthus macranthamoides, yeah. uh, which is a great plant for, I mean, it doesn't need CO2. It doesn't particularly need a lot of light. It'll benefit from both. Yeah. But it's an easy beginner's plant as well as a, a yeah. plant used by professional aquascapers. So. Yeah, it's very versatile. Yeah. Um, Glossostigma, uh, yeah. not an oidies here. That's just running right. The the substrate is actually um, Akadama bonsai soil, mostly. Okay. Um, and it's, a, again, Ian Sutherland gave, gave me a whole bucket of it because he didn't need it. Yeah. And I like it because the glosso is really able to work in between the slightly larger granules. Yeah. Um, you, you often have a problem with, you know, these kind of plants popping up when you first plant them. Yeah. But it seems really happy and it's just digging down into it. Yeah, traditionally you'd be aiming for like a really tight kind of carpet of glosso, but in here, yeah. I quite like the way it's kind of a little bit, little bit leggy, it's kind of merging into the other plants. I really like this sort of natural the, texture. There's that Amano tank where he takes three photos of mm -hmm. and it shows glosso over time, how it just takes over the whole tank. Is it, is here it? you go, here you go, George. You got it? Yeah. Oh, cool. So he. He starts off with this, um, what he calls hill rug. Go to the, this back so you want to hear yeah. that one, don't you? So he's got some glosso kind of, you know, moving up and over the, the hardscape and mixed in with some rickia. And then, uh, so that was January 1992. Yeah. April 1992, you can see the glossos, you know, getting right. more, more dominance, overtaking the rickia, has climbed yeah. up the, the hardscapes. And then, uh, June 1992, it's solidifying even further. It's really starting to dominate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's ridiculous. Now. August 1992, <laughs> there's very little else apart from Glosso, a yeah. ridge of Rickia, um, and some Sagittaria at the back. Yeah. I think there's actually a fifth act. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> November 1992, within a year, less than a year, I mean, it just looks like a privet hedge. 
a blossom. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? It's just smothered everything. But that is That's the nature. wonderful. It's yeah. ev evolution of a, of a habitat, really. Yeah. Um, and why not? It looks stunning. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. I, I have a bit of that philosophy with my tanks. So just I'll, let them go wild. Yeah. Let, let nature take its course. I'll try lots more. of things. And, and if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. If it dominates, it dominates. And I think that's a more natural process. You know, we always try and trim things into shape and cut things back and mold things. And you can certainly guide plants, but the, you'll get the best out of them if you let them kind of do what they want to do. Yeah. And that may mean that some species or specimens don't do as well as you'd like and others really go mad. But it's better to work with nature than fight against it. Yeah. And if you just let things, learn to let things go a bit, you can just, it's just easier to accept things when they go a little bit wrong. Yep. Let go of, let go of that kind of control a little bit, let, yeah, let nature do its thing. And sometimes through um, almost like accidents or, or what you might interpret as a failure, you can, the, the net result can actually be a success or growth, yep. you know? Yeah. And I think, um, especially in this kind of instant gratification culture and digital age where we're used to getting anything we want, you know, when we want, you know, almost instantly through, you know, online or, you know, whatever, just this fast food kind of culture. And I don't mean just food, I don't mean that, you know, metaphorically, you know, yep. fast food in terms of just getting not necessarily the healthiest things, but just to satisfy a... Yep but not actually willing to put the work in to get that healthy, fulfilled result. So it's by by learning to let things go like you're doing in here, yeah. by learning to let the plants do their own thing, do you think apply lessons that you're learning Certainly. from aquascoping into everyday, well, everyday stuff? Firstly, when you talked about, you know, I let it go. This chair, this is where I come and sit, and I just, I this is my zen moment. This is where I come and I just look at this, and the rest of the, the rest of the day could be going terribly, things might not be going the way I want to in life, but I come and I look at this and I think, well, oh, okay, everything here is it's growing. If nothing else in my life is going right, whatever I'm doing with the tank, it's working. So I'm doing that correctly. Fish, they seem to be healthy, they're active, they're feeding. And it's rewarding. So I've taken a blank slate, a glass box, and I've created a universe in it, and I'm tending to it, and it's thriving. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of what we learn, as you know, in your case and in mine, you know, we've been working with aquariums for decades, mm. is you learn to let go. You learn that the time and effort that you put in to doing things, but also into not doing things, can bring incredible rewards. Yeah, learning not to do things is a really good uh, talking point, isn't it? So, um, you know, one of the recent things I really kind of figured out lately is actually rest is a form of productivity because mm. I was getting obsessed about um, you know I'm juggling so many things at once so many projects you know I have obviously a YouTube channel you know the, the, the book I'm working on I do magazine articles you know maintain all the tanks Tropica YouTube Oase Ambassador yeah. um, Instagram Facebook website running a f home family kids you know, it's really hard to wind down and, and stop yeah. and rest. And because my job is aquascaping, um, I, it's really hard for me to consume aquascaping and find it therapeutic because I'm always looking for the next thing. Yeah. Actually, what I've learned lately, and especially in lockdown, is because I've had a lot more time with my aquariums, I've learned to actually consume them from that just mindfulness perspective of just being present in the moment with the aquascape, appreciating it for what it, what it is right there and then, and not thinking about what's the next thing I need to do with the scape or what what's the prob what's the problems with this scape? I used to like look for problems, like always looking for a problem, uh, and even if there wasn't really a problem, I just find one because it's not perfect. But it's just like it, it took me a while to figure out it's never going to be perfect. Just learn to let go. As long as it's not offensive, as long as that algae isn't like yeah. you know, offending you, you know, if you're viewing it from sort of six foot away and you can't even see it, then is it an issue? Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? I so, certainly do. Yeah. I think one of the other issues is that 
and I used to do this when I looked at some of your displays and, and Amano's books, like, I, okay, that's the tank that I want to do. All right, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to recreate it and use that as a template. And then it wouldn't do, for whatever reason, I didn't have the experience or the equipment or the knowledge or the luck or whatever. It wouldn't look like in the photo. Yeah. And I'd get really frustrated, like, oh, I've not yeah. managed to recreate exact. And learning that that's fine yeah. is, is vital. Like, how are you going to ever make anything original if you're always copying? You know, you can be inspired, but yeah. it's, it's the mistakes, it's the accidents that produce original content yeah. in, in, in art, in, in music. In, yeah, some of the best, discover yeah, best discoveries, scientific discoveries have been yeah. accidental, haven't they? And that's, that's really interesting. I, I, think, I think what we're learning here, or, or maybe the message we're trying to get across here, it's maybe that people that are watching uh, especially maybe beginners or those with less experiences, don't be afraid to make mistakes. As long as you're doing your best to look after the welfare of the animals that you're keeping, yeah. um, you know, which isn't 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 difficult to do with the technology we have access to and and all of the knowledge that's you know uh, easily accessible. With regards to actually aquascaping, growing plants, don't be afraid just to experiment and yeah. um, try things that you. You haven't maybe seen even been seen before. Um, just don't but don't be afraid because whatever whatever the outcome of your kind of experiment, if you like, you're going to learn something. You are either going to succeed, which is great, and you uh, you can celebrate that, or you're going to fail. That's great because you can learn from it yeah. and and you know move forward. So. God, we're really rambling, Ty, aren't we, today? <laughs> That's it's, okay. I wonder what the viewers think to this style of... Uh, because we could do this quite... Because Ty actually only lives uh, a 28-minute drive it took me this, yeah. mo this morning to get here. Uh, and, and like I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the video, Ty and I are going to be working very closely on, a, on an amazing project, a two-year project. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited. I'm, I'm really tempted to tell everyone what it is but I can't yet because we, we need to do a formal kind of uh, announcement but um, it's, it's really exciting and it's definitely um, everyone watching this will definitely be interested I'm, I'm certain of that I'm, I'm, I'm massively looking forward to it yeah. I'm, I'm super excited so you can expect loads more from me and Ty rambling hopefully in the future but I've just I think it, I think it'd be rude not to mention why you've got so many books Ty are you just a massive reader yeah um and, you know, I did Latin American development studies at uni, so I got tons of literature from South America. Then down the other end, there's all sorts of freshwater and biology stuff. There's wow. uh, lots of history. So this is your room and your desk. Yeah, that end. It's And your aquarium gallery and your yeah. bedroom. Yeah, as you know, I've been in Brazil for the last three years. I've come back to Cambridge. What? Do you want to tell people why you're in Brazil? So I was in Brazil doing a master's in animal biology, and I worked with uh, fish communities in the Pantanal wetlands. Um, and that involved, you know, being in the water, doing lots of underwater footage, collecting things, getting to spend time with freshwater stingrays, anacondas, um, waking up in the morning and finding, you know, jaguar prints around the camp, um, lots and lots of mosquitoes, dengue, um, some, some interesting experiences. Dengue, what a dengue? Dengue is a really nasty uh, disease that... Um, oh, it's a disease. Okay. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, uh, did you have it? I got it. And the way that you know, one of the symptoms is that if you, if you keep your head still, but you move your eyes, and there's massive pain behind your eyes, then you know you've got dengue. Oh. And that, that was what told me I had yes. dengue. Yes. Um, but yeah, I was there for three years. I did the masters, and then I was there for a while longer doing field work and research with the, the lab from my university. Um, have come back here, and you and I are now embarking on, on our project together. Mm. Um, so I'm in, in my sort of my old room. Um, but I'm very lucky. It's, it's a it's a space. You know, it's plants, fish, books. I don't need much you else. Got, is that a didgeridoo? Yeah, when I was a kid, um, you got my family in, in didgeridoo. Do you play guitar? I do play a little bit of blues guitar, but very little Brilliant. bit. Nice. Um, and uh, have you got have you got my book yet? Um, I'll give you your <laughs> am I allowed to say no? I don't have a copy of your book. I haven't got a copy of my book. You, I even you don't. gave my yeah. last one away. I've yeah. got a couple of wonderful books recently. I've got um, Crystal Castleman's Plant Book, which is over there yeah, by I've the got desk. That. It's amazing, isn't it? And I've got Ivan Mikolai's book, which I'm going to lend to you. Oh, the if you let me get that. Yeah, go and have a look you. at that. So that's Crystal's book in the distance. Oh, yeah. It? Which is an amazing book. And then this is... This is Ivan Mikolai's fantastic Fishes of the Orinoco. Cool. Which you haven't got. I haven't got it yet. So do you want to borrow that one? Yeah, cheers, mate. And um, 
and drool are you over borrow, it. Are you still borrowing in my... If I give you back your ADA books, I'd just like to keep the Sunken Garden Pe ones for a while, if that's right. People don't... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, that's Karen's book. I need to get a, well, a copy of mine, because she sent me one of those to look at, and then I sure. need to send her one of mine. Anyway, we'd talk, we'd book talk. Um, we can do it. Are book. people here for books or for fish tanks? I think our books can inspire you. I mean, how can you not look through a, a Takashi Amano book and not... There's something special about yeah. book. And there's something special about the, hot, you know, you can touch and feel it. Well, you can, it's something, it's just that you're just connected to it, the content a bit more with a book, I would suggest. Ivan's book, which is yeah. photos of fish in the wild. Um, I think, hang on, let's see. So from from uh, Orinoco in Venezuela, mm. I mean, he, hang on, let's see if there's one with the cardinal tetras. Is this for sale now then? This? Uh, yeah, it's still. Look at these quarries. We can put, I'll put. I'll leave a link in the description. Yeah. Um, um, I know it's not it's not cheap, but it is no. amazing quality. So if people want to support Ivan by buying his book, I think he sells it sort of for his own. Look at this. Nanostomus oh, hockey wow. stick pencil fish. It's amazing. Isn't it? The thing with Ivan's book, you know, it's a step away from aquascaping, if you like, but yeah. it lets you see how fish live in in in, in, natural, in the wild, in their natural habitats, and you can incorporate that into a, an aquascape. Yeah. Um, well, that's really using nature as inspiration, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, like na nature is in it, underwater nature, rather than, you know, the nature aquarium concept is, you know, the essence of nature from outside and bringing it in. Whereas with biotope kind of aquascaping, you actually literally using inspiration from the the original nature um, the wolf this is one of the ones i photograph quite a lot in brazil yeah um and it turns out that when they have fry the mothers are incredibly aggressive and defensive and will bite you and they've got very sharp teeth which is why they're called wolfish <laughs> and i learned that did you get bitten yeah oh wow it was actually not fun <laughs> it's 55 centimeter fish doesn't sound a lot but They've got good size. You've got teeth. some really interesting. I don't, I don't want to spoil all the stories <laughs> for a few because we'll probably dive into some other stories well, in the future. But you mentioned you like rummy noses. Oh, yeah, I yeah. want to show you this one. So I think this is um, this plant is Iconia diversifolia, which you can get even as a pond plant sometimes. Imagine if you wanted to set up a biotope that was also a planted tank. Yeah. Your ingredients would be silver sand, yeah. one plant, and rummy noses. Look at the colours there, and I, like, I just love these little splashes of red. Yeah. Beautiful. And you notice it's not particularly tannin stained, no, which is also not. why you've got such yeah. vegetation. Um, but this is amazing, the green neons, the parakeet red on the simulans. Yeah. I don't want to give too much of the book no, away. Well, we'll, we'll close it for now and, yeah, and they yeah, can, yeah. but I think books of all kinds, you know, even some of the older aquarium biotope or, or, or oh. species books. Sorry, I just pressed so, the wrong button. Then. Let's say carry on. So <laughs> they, they can give you ideas, they can teach you um, obviously things change over time, but yeah. if you can snap up an old aquarium book in a second-hand bookshop, do it. Yeah. That's a lot of my books are like the old, you know, Bain Chatlises and... and yeah. Did you want to ask any other questions about the plants in the tank, George? Um, I think we can... I think this has been long enough. I think yeah. we've kind of gone from looking at your 60p to going quite deep into a, several topics, but I think that's fine. I think the viewers might enjoy that. Let Good. us know if you enjoy this random rambling content <laughs> instead of plant-specific. I mean, it's a beautiful scape. Um, we can always do an update at, at, yeah. you know, in the future. It's going to uh, fill in the, the Amani gracilis, the red plant in the back. Yeah. It's going to fill out. It's going to evolve and change over time. Um, and it'd be great to have you back and, and do an update video and, yeah, absolutely. and show people. And, and um, for those that haven't seen already, I've done a few videos with Ty and, and I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description in the pinned comment. Um, but recently I did do a, a video of his beautiful 100 gallon uh, tank which we'll cover again do an update on that as well yeah. at some point in the future um, well, we'll say cheerio there, thanks mate it's been a really interesting vlog, it's completely evolved into something <laughs> different to what I expected but I think kind, that sometimes they're the best kind of like the aquascape, we've gone from a set idea and we've yeah. evolved into a myriad of yeah. slightly off piste off. things and that's yeah, totally fine I think that's fine, I mean for regular viewers of my channel, they've talked, they've heard me talk about plants over and over again. There's only so many ways you can talk about a fast-growing <laughs> stem plant or a carpeting plant, um, and there's always content like that available. But yeah, I think to get a kind of bit more of a, a, a unique insight into 
my and your interpretation of the hobby and you know maybe going a bit deeper i think that's i think it's really interesting anyway well, always okay. up for talking about that okay mate all right on that note thanks for watching everyone if you have enjoyed this don't forget to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't done so you take care keep on scaping cheerio